Hello, my name is Kyle Glee. I'm part of the Cloud Foundation technical marketing team. And in this video, I'm going to show how to use the new VCF installer to deploy a new VCF Cloud Foundation 9.0 fleet using the simple deployment model. The VCF installer is distributed with the STDC Manager OVA template. When you deploy the template, it will by default run in VCF installer mode. To access the installer, you simply open a browser tab and connect to the fully qualified domain name. Here we see we've connected to the VCF installer, and I will log in as the user admin at local. When you first log into the VCF installer, you begin by setting up your depot and downloading your binaries. There are two types of depots that are available. You can do an online depot. This is for environments that are connected to the internet. With the online depot, you simply provide your Broadcom software token to authenticate, and it makes the binaries available to you for download. If you are not connected to the internet, you can use the offline depot. For the offline depot, there's a little bit more setup required as you will need to stand up a local web server and use the VCF download tool to then download and stage the binaries on the web server, which can then be accessed as an offline depot. In this example, we will configure an online depot. I click configure, provide my download token, and authenticate. Once I have authenticated, I see the list of binaries available for download. I simply select the binaries I want to download and click download. With the binaries downloaded, we're ready to begin our VCF fleet deployment. Returning to the home page, we will now use the deployment wizard to deploy our Cloud Foundation fleet. Select the deployment wizard, select Cloud Foundation, and begin by indicating if you will be deploying a new VCF fleet or if you will be adding a new VCF instance to an existing VCF fleet. In this example, we will deploy a new VCF fleet. Next, we indicate if we will be using any existing components that are already running in our data center as part of this new VCF fleet. In this example, we will not be using any existing components, so we simply click Next. We then provide general information for the VCF instance to include the version number, provide a name for the VCF instance, as well as a name for the management domain. Note that by default, when deploying the VCF operations and VCF automation, the installer will configure them on the management network. If you want to customize that and deploy them on virtual networks, for example, you can select the checkbox. If you select the checkbox, it will skip the VCF operations and automation deployment and allow you to deploy those later on as a day two operation with the customizations that you require. Next, we select our deployment model. We have two choices here. We can do a simple deployment where it will deploy a smaller footprint. With the simple deployment, we deploy a single instance of the NSX management appliance, a single instance of VCF operations appliance, and a single instance of the VCF automation appliance. The simple model targets smaller deployments. In the simple model, high availability is provided by vSphere HA. Conversely, the high availability deployment model deploys the NSX instance, the VCF operations, and VCF automation as clusters comprised of three nodes each. The high availability deployment model targets larger deployments and improves additional level of availability together with improved scalability. Next, we provide our DNS and NTP settings. We then provide the details for the VCF operations deployment. Here we specify the size of the appliance, the fully qualified domain name, as well as the administrator and root passwords. Note that we're only providing a single fully qualified domain name. This is because we chose the simple model, so only a single appliance will be deployed. But along with the VCF operations appliance, we're deploying two additional appliances, the fleet management appliance, along with the VCF operations collector appliances. Both these appliances are new with VCF 9.0. Here we provide the appliance fully qualified domain name and check the box indicating that we will use the same passwords that were set with VCF operations. We then provide the details for the VCF automation instance. If we have an existing VCF automation instance that we want to use, we can select the checkbox to indicate that we will import VCF automation later and upgrade it through the fleet manager capabilities. In this example, we will go ahead and deploy a new instance of VCF automation 
So we enter the fully qualified domain name along with the administrator password. We then provide IP addressing as well as a prefix name as well as the cluster cider for VCF automation. We then provide the details for our vCenter server instance. Here again, we provide the fully qualified domain name, the appliance size. Here we also specify our storage size as well as provide a data center name and a cluster name as well as we set a name for our vCenter SSO domain, along with the corresponding passwords. We then configure the NSX Manager. Here again, we provide the size, the fully qualified domain name, as well as set the passwords for the administrator root and audit accounts. We then indicate the type of storage that will be used with the management domain in our new VCF fleet. Note that there are three options. We can choose to use vSAN, VMFS on fiber channel or NFS. In this example, we are using vSAN. Do note that we support both vSAN OSA as well as vSAN ESA. We then specify the host that will make up our managed domain. Because we chose to use the simple deployment model and because our storage type is vSAN, a minimum of three hosts are required. Here we have entered the three hosts, ESX 1, 2, and 3. With the host added, we will confirm the fingerprints and proceed to the next step. Next, we provide the network details for our VCF instance. Here we specify the details for four networks. We have the ESX management network, the VM management network, the vMotion network, and the vSAN network. Note that we have chosen to combine the ESX management network and the VM management network on the same VLAN and subnet. For the vMotion network, we have that on a separate subnet and we are specifying a range of IP addresses. These are the IP addresses that will be assigned to the VM kernel interfaces that are used for vMotion on our ESX host. In addition, we have the vSAN network on a separate VLAN. And here again, we have the subnet along with a range of IP addresses that will be configured on the corresponding VM kernel adapters for our ESX host. We then configure our distributed switches. By default, all the networks will be configured on a single vSphere distributed switch. However, you can customize this and deploy multiple distributed switches in order to provide traffic separation. For example, if we choose the storage traffic separation, it will create two virtual distributed switches and it will isolate the vSAN storage traffic on a separate VDS and a separate set of physical NICs. Here, we see the two vSphere distributed switches that will be created. On the first distributed switch, we will have our ESX management, our VM management, our vMotion, and our NSX traffic. On the second VDS, we will have our vSAN traffic. Note the red dot next to the first VDS. This is an indication that additional input is required to complete that VDS configuration. Expanding the VDS and scrolling down, we can see that additional configuration is required for setting up our NSX traffic. Specifically, we need to provide additional details for configuring our NSX tunnel endpoints or our TEPs. In this example, we will configure our TEPs using an IP pool inside of NSX. So we specify the VLAN, we specify the pool name, provide a description, provide a subnet, as well as an IP range along with the corresponding gateway. With the distributed switches configured, we then move on to configuration for the SDDC Manager appliance. Here we provide the fully qualified domain name and set the passwords for the root, VCF, and administrator accounts. This completes the input for our new VCF instance. We can review the details of the VCF instance. That we can also view this in a JSON format, as well as we can download the JSON specification file. This is handy if you're doing a lot of VCF deployments and you want to customize the configuration, but you don't want to have to go to the UI each time. You can save the JSON file, edit it offline, and then import it into the VCF installer, or you can pass it using an API call. With the review complete, we will now proceed to validate the inputs. 
This validation is quite extensive. It will validate not only the inputs we have provided, but also verify network connectivity, access to the host, and that everything meets the requirements. And we are ready to deploy our new VCF9 fleet. Here we see the validation has completed and we're ready to deploy our VCF fleet. Depending on the type of servers you're using and whether you chose to deploy the simple model or the high availability model, and whether or not you're deploying an instance of operations and automation will all affect how long it takes. In smaller deployments, this can be as quick as 90 minutes. In larger deployments, it can take up to four hours. Here in this demo, we will go ahead and jump forward to the end of the deployment. Here we see the deployment has completed. From the VCF installer, we can now view a history of all the tasks that have been performed as part of the deployment. With VCF deployed, we will now connect to VCF operations. Here we will log in as the admin user using the password that was assigned as part of the deployment. Here we see that in our VCF environment, we have a single VMware Cloud Foundation account. Under administration, going to integrations, we can view details about the components that make up this Cloud Foundation account and verify that we are collecting metrics for all the deployed components. Going to the inventory view, we see the vCenter server that makes up our vCF management domain. Selecting the vCenter server, we can view details of the vCenter inventory. Navigating to actions, we can launch out to the vSphere web client, where we can log in as administrator at vSphere.local using the password that was assigned during the deployment. Here we see our vCF management domain. Then in the management domain, we have seven appliances that have been deployed. We have our vCenter server, our NSX manager, our vCF operations instance together with the fleet management and the collector, our vCF automation instance, and our SDVC manager. Because we chose to use the VCF simple deployment model, a single instance of each component has been deployed. Along with deploying all the appliances, we also configured a vSAN data store. Here we see our vSAN data store. Selecting the host tab, we can see that all three of our hosts are participating in the vSAN cluster. Navigating to the network icon, we can see our two vSphere distributed switches that were configured. Here again, we can see that the management, the VM management, and the vMotion are configured on VDS01, and the vSAN traffic has been isolated on VDS02. Along with configuring our vSAN data store and configuring our vSphere distributed switches, we also deployed and configured VMware NSX. Opening a new browser tab and connecting to the NSX manager where we'll log in as the admin user, we can navigate to system, fabric, and host, where we can verify that all the hosts have been configured and are ready for use with NSX. Navigating back to our vSphere client and going back to our inventory, we can also confirm that the NSX tunnel endpoints or the TEPs have been configured on each host. Selecting ESX1, going to the configure tab, and selecting the VM kernel adapter, we can see our two TEP interfaces have been configured on VMK10 and VMK11. Returning back to VCF operations, we will now look at the topology for our operations and automation instance. Going to fleet management under lifecycle, we can see here that both VCF operations and VCF automation have been deployed. Clicking the manage tab under VCF operations, we see the operations instance and clicking topology, we can see that our VCF operations instance is currently comprised of a single appliance together with a cloud of proxy. Going back to the components and selecting automation, here again, under topology, we can see that the automation instance is also comprised of a single appliance. This completes our review of using the VCF installer to deploy a new Cloud Foundation fleet using the simple deployment model. Thank you very much.